Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you. High alert as Cyclone Bipur Joy approaches coast of India and Pakistan. Pakistan gets its first shipment of discounted Russian oil. And petition filed against Nepal PM the hell on use of child soldiers. And now for all the details. India is hosting the G20 Development Ministers meeting in Varanasi city. The three-day meeting is taking place amidst mounting developmental challenges across the world, aggravated by economic slowdown, climate change and geopolitical conflicts. Virtually addressing the meeting, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday said that democratization of technology is a crucial tool to help bridge the data divide and for meaningful policy making. Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar highlighted India's seven-year action plan on sustainable development goals. He emphasized the requirement to deal with supply chain disruptions and reminded developed economies that cherry picking is not an effective approach to deal with collective challenges. The international community must speak in unison for those most in need. It is essential that we constantly strengthen the international architecture and governance systems for the protection of global order, global laws and global values. In doing so, we would invariably find ourselves on the path where diplomacy, dialogue and cooperation take precedence over competition conflict and division. And a storm in the Arabian Sea has strengthened to become a powerful cyclone and is likely to hit India's western state of Gujarat and southern parts of Pakistan this week. The cyclone, named Bipar Joy, is expected to make landfall on Thursday between Mandvi in Gujarat and Karachi in Pakistan with a maximum sustained wind speed of 125 to 135 km per hour. Indian authorities have advised fishing communities to halt operations while some people were also evacuated from the coastal areas. Similar precautionary measures have been taken in Pakistan. On Monday, PM Modi also chaired a high-level meeting to review the preparedness before the cyclone landfall. Actually, uh, it is the only the Gujarat uh, will be impacted uh, very much. But uh, certainly in, uh, after landfall, when it will be going uh, to little inside inland, then uh, heavy, heavy rainfall may take place over uh, South Rajasthan. Well, the first cargo of discounted Russian crude oil arrived in Pakistan's Karachi on Monday, Prime Minister Sheba Sharif announced on Twitter. Terming it a transformative day, Sharif said the oil deal between Pakistan and Russia will start a new relationship between the two countries. The discounted crude is part of the new deal struck between Russia and Pakistan, which is facing a payment crisis and is at risk of defaulting on its debt. Energy imports make up the majority of Pakistan's external payments. The country is grappling with record inflation and critical levels of reverse that can cover barely a month worth of imports. The government has frequently raised energy tariffs and scaled back subsidies in an attempt to unlock external funding from the IMF. And Sri Lanka's finance ministry has lifted import restrictions on 286 items, a fresh sign the country is starting to emerge from its worst economic crisis in decades. The island nation plunged into crisis last year as its foreign exchange reserves ran out. The government limited imports on more than 3,200 items, including seafood, electronics and even musical instruments. The ministry said restrictions on 928 items will continue, including vehicle imports, which were banned in March 2020. A wide range of items from railway carriages to radio broadcasting receivers have been released from restrictions in the latest list. Sri Lanka has also slashed prices of 60 essential drugs by 16%. Despite the easing of the crisis, the country still needs to implement key economic reforms and complete debt talks with creditors by September in time for its first IMF program review. 
and a group of former Mao's child combatants have filed a writ petition in Nepal's Supreme Court against incumbent Prime Minister Pushkamal Dehel and former PM Baburam Bhattarai, accusing them of war crimes. The petition accuses both the leaders of recruiting minors in the armed conflict, calling it against the international human rights law. The Apex Court is scheduled to conduct the first hearing on 13th of June. However, opposition lawmakers have demanded resignation from the Prime Minister, calling it ethically wrong to remain in position. I want to say this, Mr. Prime Minister, you have to go to the Prime Minister's court, you have to go to the Prime Minister's court, you have to go to the Prime Minister's court, and you have to go to the Prime Minister's court. Mr. Prime Minister, you have to go to the Prime Minister's court, and you have to go to the Prime Minister's court. As per report of the UN mission in Nepal, which oversaw and conducted the army integration in 2007, around 2,973 Maoist combatants were verified as minors. The disqualified and minor combatants did not get any substantial support from Nepal government, except for a few thousand rupees from the United Nations. And well, in order to highlight queer issues, members of the LGBTQ plus community in Nepal and India held pride parades and painted the streets with rainbow colored flags and to demand equality. Take a look. The fifth edition of the Nepal Pride Parade rolled on the streets of Kathmandu this past weekend, painting the roads with rainbow colored flags. The members of the LGBTQ plus community also chanted slogans and demanded their recognition and equality. They have been demanding legalization of same-sex marriage and rights for adoption of children. Nepal's constitution promulgated in 2015 has special provisions for sexual minorities, but the group has been demanding to complete its implementation. A similar pride parade was held in India's Badodara city on Sunday. The month of June is celebrated globally every year as the Pride Month. India's Supreme Court in 2018 struck down Section 377, a colonial era law that outlawed same sex relations. Activists have been pushing for more rights, such as the legalization of gay marriage, but the government has remained largely silent on the issue. And hundreds of people thronged India's Hyderabad city recently to attend the Fish Prasadam event, during which they were fed live fish offering believed to cure respiratory problems, including asthma and bronchitis. The event was held after a hiatus of three years due to COVID-19 pandemic. The yellow paste prasadam is a recipe of the Bhatani family that is stuffed inside the mouth of a live mural fish. The fish is then swallowed without drinking water. It is believed it helps in clear the patient's esophagus as it makes its way down to the stomach and later releases the medicine. The organizer said the fish survives for about 10 to 15 minutes inside the body and clears phlegm in the lungs. I have seen a video of problem in my video. Our village has also been taken from here. They have to be safe. Today, we have a grand prasad. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see the same time tomorrow. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.